guys good morning your friend Jim here with another video uh, regarding the 2004 Mitsubishi Montero today I'm gonna to be talking to you about P0134 P0134 is an O2 sensor signal code uh, bank one sensor one specifically uh, the computer detected that the signal coming out of this sensor does not get above the 0.5 volt uh, threshold over a certain period of time and then the computer sets uh, this DTC P0134. So we're going to go over some of the basics when you're when you have one of these codes, some of the basics on the computer function, and basically the criteria that the computer uses to set the code. Also, I'm going to be showing you some video where I hook hook up the scan tool, I graphed out both sensors, and you can definitely see after a drive that the one sensor, bank one sensor one, that starts to deteriorate and not able to generate a signal. I'll show you that here in a minute. Uh, there's a couple of other theories that I may have uh, regarding this issue, but ultimately I think it's just a bad sensor. And I already have one here. Got this one at Napa Auto Parts, uh, $100 plus tax. So it's not, not super cheap, but it's a Denso, so it's probably a good quality. Uh, anyway, let me set up the camera here and we'll go over some of, the, go over some of that stuff and uh, <clears throat> we'll go from there. All right. So we can see here the bank one sensor one is starting to fail and deteriorate the signal. If you see here, there's it flat lines multiple times, and then now the signal, look at the green line, it's just going down lower and lower, and the voltage is just can't even go above 0 0.3, 0 0.2 volts anymore. And it's just gonna keep doing that. Now it's been about a five mile test drive, and it's doing this now. So just want to show you guys how this sensor is behaving now. There is no check engine light yet. The computer is still giving the sensor the benefit of the doubt, and uh, but it will trigger the light in in, uh, in a few moments. All right, guys. So as you can see here, here's a, a list of DTCs <clears throat> for the Montero, and you can see P0134 right there. And as you can see, it's got a little asterisk asterisk on it. Uh, P0134 heated oxygen sensor circuit no activity detected bank 1 sensor 1 bank 1 is on the passenger side sensor 1 is a sensor before the catalytic converter that's the DTC that we have um, now uh, some of these other DTCs as you can see right there P0154 uh, there's P0134 which is the one we were talking about today and then there's some other ones here that have that asterisk can see right there now what that means it means that whatever the computer is looking at to set that DTC it's not basing it on key cycles it's a continuous monitor it's it's, it's uh, looking at that situation and that signal uh, continuously so if it detects a problem it will set the code right away it doesn't have to wait for another key cycle for it to set the code. Um, that's basically what that means. It's a continuous monitor uh, situation that will set that DTC. That's what that asterisk means. Um, so here we have our system here and you can see uh, the computer, any computer system works this way. Uh, it's basically a series of inputs and outputs. It's got a microprocessor like any computer, even your home computer, even your brain inside your head works this way. You have sensors and then you have actuators. Your sensors tell the computer, tell the microprocessor what's going on and the microprocessor responds by activating one of the actuators. Every, since the beginning of time uh, with computer control vehicles, they basically work exactly the same way. Uh, over the years though, the computers have become a little more capable and now they have they have uh, other capabilities. They can detect certain specific functions, uh, certain trouble, so so we can make it easier for us to diagnose. For example, like in this case, it's not just that the sensor signal is bad; it's specifically telling us that the sensor signal does not go above the 0.5 threshold. So it's pretty specific when it comes to that, and that's what the computer is detecting or looking at in order to set the P0134. So, let's see here. All 
All right, guys, so let's go to the Montero here. Um, I already took the induction system out of the way, air induction, just so we can have a better view of what's going on down here. Because this is one of my theories regarding this P0134. All right, so check it out. Do you see, do you see all the oil right here on the corner? And then this is the O2 sensor harness here. And that's the O2 sensor down there. Now, the sensor harness, it's basically covered in oil. You can see right there. You see that? It's just covered with oil. Uh, the little holes that you see right there, well, you probably can't see it, but let me just kind of point it out on the new sensor. Here, hang on just one second. So basically one of my theories regarding on what could be possibly causing the P0134 in this case is um, the sensor itself might be deter deteriorated. This area here of the sensor, right? So in this little setup here, we have the amp, we have the sensor, pretend the sens this sensor is installed in the exhaust manifold. You have the exhaust manifold right here and then you have the ambient over here, the, the atmosphere, okay? And then the, these sensors have these little tiny holes right there. And that's where the sensor samples the ambient oxygen. It compares it to the oxygen in here. And that's how the sensor generates that O2 sensor signal, that voltage, to tell the computer, the computer whether the mixture is ri rich or lean. So in, in my Montero, on the corner valve cover, uh, on the corner of the valve cover area there, there's, a, there's an oil leak. Even though I recently replaced the valve cover gaskets, I still have that oil leak. And that oil leak, which was there before I did the timing belt, has covered this whole harness, this whole O2 sensor harness in oil. And it, it, it seems like it's even saturated these little holes, these little sample holes. I'll show you right now on the vehicle. But one of my theories, theories is that that is keeping the O2 sensor from getting a proper sample of the ambient oxygen and then it's screwing up how the sensor generates the signal. In that case, obviously the new O2 sensor is going to take care of the issue, uh, but it may not be a sensor issue itself. It could just be that the oil saturation here. So before replacing the sensor, I just tried, wanted to experiment a little bit. I basically doused it down with some brake cleaner, cleaned it out really well, got all the oil, gunk, all that stuff out of the, the little sample area there. And then we're gonna, we're gonna take it for another test drive while monitoring the signal from the sensor. See if that makes any difference at all. Um, so let's, uh, let's try that. I'll go ahead and uh, videotape that as well. All right guys, so so far after cleaning that gunk out of the sensor, uh, and again, it's cold startup again. Uh, <clears throat> maybe not 100% cold, but hot soak. Um, it's the both sensors are acting pretty normal. I mean, you can see the voltage cycling on both sensors. Um, so we'll we'll take it for another test drive, maybe 10 mile test drive, and then we'll see what happens with the signal. And as soon as I see any anomalies with uh, with any with bank one sensor one, I'll go ahead and get the camera and record that for you. But I already recorded when it deteriorated the signal, so I'll, I'll let that to the video I'll add this to the video as well all right all right guys so I'm back at the house here after my test drive and um, this time the check engine light came on as I mentioned just a little bit ago uh, the sensor signal started to fail after about three miles and on my way back home the check engine light popped on and uh, so at this point sensor replacement is the only option all right guys so i'm gonna get ready to remove the o2 sensor and i have a couple of options here a couple of tools obviously you have this tool that uh, is an o2 sensor removal tool 22 millimeters specifically for o2 sensors uh 3 8 inch drive and uh, it's got that opening so you can put the harness through and put the sensor put this remove the sensor i also cut this wrench it's a 22 millimeter Craftsman wrench uh, to do the same function as this guy here. Uh, 
sometimes the O2 sensor is too tight and this doesn't work. I'm going to try it first just because it's a little bit easier. Uh, but I don't know if it's going to work. If it doesn't work, then I'll have to use that guy right there. Okay, so here's the sensor. I just removed it. Um, just FYI, it's easier to do it from the bottom of the vehicle rather than the top. Um, I, I couldn't do it from the top, so I just put the vehicle on a ramp. You can see it right there. Just one ramp. And then just uh, crawl down there and removed it. So I'm with my theory regarding the oil gunk all over this area here, uh, cleaning it out with some brake cleaner, uh, pretty much didn't work. Uh, I mean, it was, a, it was my theory, but I cleaned it out and I test drove it and the condition was still there. The signal was still deteriorate, deteriorating from this guy. So basically it leaves me no choice but to replace the sensor. So out with the old in with the new here's the new one right here and uh, every time uh, you're going to install a new O2 sensor or pretty much anything that goes into the exhaust such as a flange gasket bolt or any exhaust manifold bolt or anything like that uh, always use anti-seize uh, anti-seize uh, grease here uh, the reason is is because the heat basically causes things to just get caked on there and with this stuff it just prevents it from doing that so when it's time to remove it it's not that big of a deal it's not stuck in there so i usually put a dab on there like this and then just run my finger around so that the entire area can have it so there see see how that's on there like that turn the light on so you guys can see better. so that's it Try not to get try not to get any on this side, just on the thread. Just clean clean the excess here. I did get some right here, but it's not a big deal really. So there we go. So a little bit of anti seize stuff on there, and that will keep it from getting stuck in there for the next time you have to replace it, or somebody else might replace it but it's kind of how what you have to do all right i'm gonna go ahead and slap this on and well, not slap it on but bolt it on and i'll come back with you guys here on the next test drive just got done with the test drive <clears throat> everything is normal the sensor is functioning properly no more check engine light no more signal drop nothing like that uh, there's just one more thing i gotta show you guys uh in case you don't have a scan tool like i do uh, even though those things are not very expensive, maybe 300 bucks. I got that one at Napa Auto Parts for about 300 bucks. Uh, but still, not every, not everyone has one. You can still check the voltage coming out of that sensor uh, with your regular voltmeter, and I'll show you how you how you do that. How I did how I did that. So here's the voltmeter connected here, and uh, right now it's reading the signal coming out of that sensor. As you know, the sensor fluctuates between 100 millivolts to 900 millivolts, anywhere anywhere in between there, it's up and down when it enters closed loop. And basically, just find whatever the signal wire is for the O2 sensor, back probe with the small wire, like I have it right there, uh, connect, it to the connect the alligator clip to the, to the voltmeter, negative side to the battery, I mean, you know how to connect the voltmeter. Uh, if you don't, definitely a skill you need to have. Uh, and how also how to read a voltmeter, you know, it's in this case. It's uh, You can see it's reading millivolts right there. So it's going between a hundred and something millivolts to about Nine eight nine hundred millivolts. It's just going up and down like that. This little bar graph gives you an indication that it's going up and down uh, So That's basically the next you know, you can also do it with this if you don't have a scan tool. Scan tool obviously is much better because you have a wave pattern and a little bit of history of that voltage going through your screen. So, uh, yeah, I just want to share that as well. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one. All right, guys. So this concludes the video. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Um, I hope this information helps some of you out there. Um, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks again. All right. See you later. Bye.